couple of com couple of comments before I jump in. First of all, for those of you that are here, you can write this down if you want. I want to get through a lot. I can also I'll print this up for you when you're done. If you can stay till the end, when will it end? I don't know, four ish. Whenever you guys feel like you're, you're okay with this. Again, I emailed out my previous tutorials. Also, just about five minutes ago. I put some extra practice on the website. So I'm going to assume all of you have been to this page before, pitmath.com, click to get copies of the notes and you've seen where your block is. So whatever block you're in, block A or G or H, if you go under vector momentum, you'll see old momentum review assignment and old momentum review answers. This is the uh, one that I used to give out as my ultimate review before I digitized everything. So this is also like, 30 pages long or something like that. If you want more practice, there's lots more practice. This has got some actually pretty nasty ones. There is going to be some overlap because some of the questions that I digitized were also on this one. But if you want more practice, there it is. And I put um, a handwritten answer key showing all my steps as well. The same as I do for my normal ultimate kinematics reviews. So you should be able to kind of figure stuff out. If you want more practice this weekend, you're sitting there and you're going, boy, I got a hankering for some momentum at angles. There you go. Okay, so I will print this up if you need it, if you want it, and uh, let's begin. Let's talk about the test. Specifically, first, let's talk about the written section of the test. It's going to be three or four questions. What kind of questions? Well, there is going to be a you using principles of physics right to explain question. Okay. I've dropped some hints about it during my lessons, much like I've done for some of my previous ones. Maybe I've gone off a rant or a tangent, or I've said, ooh, I really like this, or hey, here's a word you guys should underline and remember, or something like that. I've tried to drop some hints. Uh, generally, kids do pretty well on it. The ones that get it wrong are choked because they did it sloppily. Um, but generally, kids find this one pretty good. Then, there's going to be collisions at angles. How many? I think right now, just one. I'm going from memory. I photocopied these in the middle of last week, but I'm pretty sure just one. What do I mean by a collision at angles? Heck. I'll take a question from here and I'll just uh, change the numbers. So as I scan through the ultimate review, collisions at angles, collisions at angles, collisions at, oh, there's a great example of a collision at an angle. This would be a great test question. Also, because I'm pretty sure this is not going to be right angle Sokotoa. So I'll copy it. I'll change the mass, I'll change the incoming speed, and suddenly it's a whole new question. And I'm guessing this is what most of you are still wrestling with the most. If you wrap your brain around this, you're in pretty good shape for the test. So we have two steel pucks. Why did they say steel? I think what they're also implying is the collision is going to be stuck together or separate, separate in ela elastic, elastic. Let's make the mass one point, or sorry, the speed 1.4 meters per second. Let's make the mass 0.3 kilograms. Let's make, the, make this mass 0.2 kilograms. And after the collision, let's have it going 1.1 meter per second. And heck, how about 40 degrees? There. There. Determine the speed and direction, fancy word velocity, of the 0.2 kilogram puck after the collision. So here is the approach that I've given you. Lisa, I've tried to be very systematic. Did I say collision? This is a job for conservation of momentum. And the shortest way to write the law of conservation of momentum is like that. The total momentum before, the sum of the momentum before, 
equals the total momentum after, the sum of the momentum after. And then I say to myself, self, before the collision, what was moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Mass one, look at the picture, right? Picture's worth a thousand words. Wham, they collide. Wham, they collide! Sorry, my mistake, I missed that, Jordan. Apologies to those of you on the internet with headphones. After the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Stuck together or separate? Now, if it was stuck together, I could handle that as well. It's just that when I tried to find the speed and I divided by the mass, I'd have to make sure I divided by the mass of both. Okay, I think there was one like that. Uh, actually, I think there's one like that on the take-home quiz that I gave you guys. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think. Um, momentum one final. Momentum two final. And then... Then, Zach, our approach diverges depending on whether there's angles or whether it's linear, depending on whether it's one dimension or two dimensions. And this is two dimensions. If it's one dimension, be consistent. Let one way be positive. Let the other way be negative. Be alert if there's a change in direction. Make sure you get the negative if it rebounds or something like that. I did a question in each class last day with the tennis balls, and almost everyone missed the rebound. So make sure you notice if it bounces off something, you better, since momentum is a vector, let one of the velocities be positive, one of the velocities be negative. Be negative. But then, Kylie, it's really, you know, math nine equation solving. Everything's in a nice straight line. Angles, I dulp. In fact, I go very paranoid and very systematic and very careful because you probably learned it's very easy to make mistakes with this. I will almost always draw compass rows. Even if I'm sure I don't need it, I feel better, Alex. I've written something down. It's part of my routine. This is like my stretching out before I get ready. This is like layup drills. This is, this is my warm-up. <laughs> underneath, Jacob, underneath each vector that I've written, I'm going to draw a picture. So the direction of the mass one initial, there it is. It's east. And what value is going to go on here? Most common mistake I see, kids put the velocity. They put a 1.4. No. It's going to be mass times velocity. It's going to be mass times velocity. It's going to be 0.3 times 1.4. 0.42. That's how much momentum I have coming in. 0.42 kilogram meters per second due east. When they collide. Afterwards, now this one is a little bit nice because they gave me a picture. It looks like the momentum of the first object is that way. Momentum one final. I'm trying to fit this all on one page here. Plus, and it looks like momentum two final. Now, oh, wait a minute, they even gave me enough. I can figure out momentum one final. It's going to be 0.3 times 1.1. It's going to be 0.3 times 1.1, 3.33, uh, right? Now I'm going to draw a picture. I'm going to draw the triangle. Am I subtracting? Here, well, technically, yes, because I don't know this guy. However, I do know it's pointing down and right, south and east from the picture. So I'm going to draw the vector that I know, 0.33, at an angle of, I think I said, 40 degrees above the horizontal, north of east. And I'm going to add it tip to tail to the mystery vector. And Rachel, I know what they add to. Apparently, when I add this plus the mystery vector, I have to get straight to the right, which means if I'm drawing the mystery vector, I'm not going to draw it that long. I'm not going to draw it that short. I'm going to draw it. About there. Now, you could argue with me, Anthony, and say, Mr. Duke, how don't you know that it's not that way and stop? I don't. Or how do you know that it's not that way? And Because so, all of those would give you a nice horizontal vector. Yeah, and you're right. I don't know. I can kind of make a guess. Anthony, how big is this momentum? Can you read it? 0.33. 0.33? Yeah. 
How big is this momentum? Can you read it? Not much bigger. This line, not much longer than that line, which means I think the green one has to come down fairly steep. But not like this, so it's isosceles. I think kind of my guess is okay. I think it's going to be about that. And this is 0.42. Now, oh, mystery momentum too. Right? Am I wrong? Ben, is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that okay, Christy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now what? This is cosine law. Cosine law. What's the cosine law going to be? Well, it's the mystery. By the way, how do I know it's cosine law? Very quickly in my head, I went like this. I went, have I got a, do I know both of those? Do I know both of those? Do I know both of those? If I knew any of those, it'd be the sine law. By the way, I think on your take home quiz, I think there does end up being one question that you can actually solve with a sine law. Because I think I gave you an extra bit of information. I gave you one more velocity that I normally don't give you or something like that. Double check, I can't remember. But when we go over it next class, you'll see. So it's going to be cosine law. Cosine law says that what I'm trying to find squared equals 0.33 squared plus 0.42 squared minus 2. 0.33, 0.42, cos 40. Cosine law says squared plus, oh, squared, Mr. Duick, plus squared minus 2 times 0.33 times 0.42 cos 40. Cos, Mr. Duick, let's try that again. Cos 40. Boy, enough went wrong there. I better double check that. Squared plus squared minus 2 times times cos. Square root. And I get, well, no, when you square root a small number, you get a bigger answer, right? When you square root a number less than one as a decimal, you actually get a bigger answer. I get almost exactly 0.27. Boy, this is almost like I made this up, but I didn't. I'll go 0.27097. I'll carry extra sig figs. The final momentum, 0.27097. The final Speed is going to be take this number and divide it by the mass. Which mass? Make sure you divide by the right, the correct mass. Uh, it's mass 2, which I said was 0.2. And I get 1.35 meters per second. This bugs some kids. Mr. Duick, wait a minute. We were coming in at 1.4. This is leaving at 1.1, and you got 1.35. You got almost as much velocity as incoming. That's because velocity is not conserved. Kinetic energy is not conserved. Momentum is conserved in a collision. Wait a minute, Mr. Duick. I thought you said that kinetic energy was, no, 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 no. I never said kinetic energy was conserved. I said total energy was conserved. In fact, if you wanted to, Grant, you could crunch the kinetic energy before the collision, which would be a half mv squared. Calculate the kinetic energy after the collision by going a half mv squared plus a half mv squared once you found v. You'd find you've, we've lost some energy. You'd find that this added up to less than this. In fact, the difference has gone into heat and sound and deforming the shapes during the collision. So kinetic energy, not conserved. Total energy, yes, conserved. Total momentum, conserved. Kinetic energy, not conserved. That's a speed. How can I turn it into a velocity? Add a direction. Where's the direction going to be here? Well, why can't I use that angle as my theta? Because that's where my vector is starting. It is starting right here. What's wrong with that angle? What is that? What of what? I love the way Jake said it. It's slanty of slanty. Yeah, it's nothing of nothing. So, not going to help me. So, if you, the, an angle inside the triangle won't help you, 
the trick that we've used is we've added a horizontal or a vertical line, in this case a horizontal line. We said I want to find that, which is what of what? North of south, east of west, what of what? That's south of east. In fact, you know what? I'm going to leave a space. I'm going to say south of east. Now, the problem with that angle, it's not in my triangle, Zorro. And I see Grant kind of puzzled here. So Grant, I always want the angle where my vector is starting from, not where it's pointing to, where it's coming from. Okay? But I can find the magnitude of theta using the Z trick. This is also going to be angle theta in there. But I always write that because if I find theta, I might think, oh, it's north of west, which is what theta is in the triangle, but that's not the triangle theta, that's not the theta that I want with my vector. Say magnitude, but I'd have the wrong what of what. Uh, speaking of, let's find the magnitude. It's going to be sine theta over what? 0.33, what's across from it? Equals the sine of, on the angle that I know, over what's across from it? Oh, the 0. 0.270097. Now I have the velocity on here, but I'm kind of a nerd. What I tend to do is, well, I went, got the velocity by dividing by 0. 0.2. I'll go times by 0. 0.2, and there is my original momentum, Rachel, to like umpteen decimal places, all nice back, and that's less typing to me than trying to retype that whole thing anyways. Is that one fraction equals one fraction? Yep, yep. So we're going to get sine theta equals uh, 0.33 sine 40 divided by 0 0.27097. 0 0.33 sine 40 divided by, haha, -ha, answer button. And the sine, uh, well, huh? Oh, that's the sine of the angle. Don't, wrong symbol. The actual angle is 51.7, actually 51.8. Oh, heck, I'll just call it 52 degrees because that's two sig figs and that's acceptable. South of east. Mr. Duick, that looks like 52 degrees 5 of epsilon or something. Yeah, my writing's messy, which is the degree symbol. Hopefully tells you one's a what a what. So there's absolutely going to be a collision at an angle. Now, what could I ask to make this nastier? Certainly, a nastier multiple choice would be give you the same picture and say, hey, tell me the uh, loss or the change in kinetic energy, how much heat was generated. You'd have to walk through all of this. And then very quickly, you'd say, what's the final kinetic energy? Well, the final kinetic energy is a half times mass one, m times v final squared plus a half times mass two times its v final, which was uh, 1.35. That's how much energy there is after the collision. How much energy is there before the collision? A half times 0.3 times 1.4 squared. Uh-oh, did I gain energy or did I type this in wrong? I should have less energy after the collision. A half m v squared plus, you know, it's entirely possible I might have made up an impossible question with this much velocity coming in, it might not be possible to be leaving at 1.1 meters per second at that angle. I'm just making up numbers. So let's take that back and say I probably wouldn't ask you to find the change in because this would solve the energy crisis, right? I smacked two rocks together and I got more energy coming out than I put, got putting in. <laughs> hey, there, we have a new unit. We'll call it the Duick. It will dominate the world. I'll buy Bill Gates in about 10 years. So. I could ask you that, though, with better numbers. What else could I ask? A really nasty multiple choice question would say, find mass one's impulse.
what's impulse? Change in momentum. I would have to go final minus initial. I would have to go final minus initial, where the final was uh, 0.3 times 1.1. 1 .1. 0.33 and the initial was uh, 0.42. How would I subtract those two vectors? I wouldn't. I'd add the opposite. So I would have to draw this way plus that way. I think the impulse would be kind of like that, but a straight line, not a curve. Yeah. That would be a good, nasty, multiple choice. Although probably, Alex, I would only ask for either the direction of the impulse, find the angle, or the magnitude of the impulse, find the cosine law. I probably wouldn't try and hit you up for both magnitude and direction, because that's a lot of work. But maybe. So the first kind of multi uh, written question, collision with angles. Boom! No? There you go. He's so proud. Now, on your quiz, I gave you an explosion with no right angles. It's really quite nasty, Josh. It's going to be, I think it's cosine. Or that might even be the one that you have to pull up the sine law to get to the cosine law to get back to the sine law. It, it, it's nasty. I'm going to tell you right now, those of you that are giving up your after school, on the test, the explosion that I'm going to give you is there's going to be a right angle in there somewhere. So it's going to be three pieces, and at least two of the pieces are going to be like this. Uh, just make sure you add them tip to tail like this, that you don't just have them both coming from the same starting point. Okay? You want a good example of an explosion? Uh, do I have an explosion in here? Sure. Apparently I do. I wrote down here like number 47. Sure. This is a very slow explosion. Mr. Duick, this is a scholarship question, and it's fair game as far as I'm concerned. So number 47, I like number 47, I like number 47. It says a stationary life draft, life raft of mass blah 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 is carrying two survivors with masses psht and psht. they dive off at the same instant one due east one due north ooh nice right angles what speed and direction does the raft start to move nineteen eighty five I was in grade ten then This question was on the 06 June 1985 provincial exam. In case you're wondering, whenever you see those numbers, that's where those came from. I was at one point trying to keep track. So here's a controlled explosion. Let's change the numbers. Let's make the raft a little lighter. Let's have this person go on a diet. Let's have this person put on some weight. And heck, Rachel, let's have this person jump a little slower. And this person's really heavy, so they only get up to 3.8 meters per second. OK. Is there a collision? No, first of all, what do you want me to find? Speed and direction, velocity. Is there a collision? No. Is there an explosion? Well, this is technically a very slow explosion. And the key idea behind an explosion is, yes, it is a job for a conservation of momentum. But in an explosion, what's your initial momentum? So what's your final momentum? Zero. Now, I do have, I'll use R for raft. The lighter person will be person one. The heavier person will be person two. Uh, I, I do have, uh, I still draw my, my, my vector equation. 
I do have three things moving. Now I dulp. It says the first person moves due east. Um. How big? Mass, 55, times velocity, 4.1. Didn't I change it to 50? Oh, 45. Thank you. And 75. How about I change all the numbers in there? Let's try that again. 45 times 4.1. 184.5. Plus, due north, how big? 75 times 3.8, 285. So if I'm drawing the vector triangle, oh, plus, don't know. How would I add the two vectors that I know together? Draw them. So it's going to be 184.5. Two hundred and eighty five. How will I draw the third vector? Well, the key idea is that the opposite of a resultant, coming back to where you started from. In fact, the direction is going to be south and west. It may end up being west of south, it may end up being south of west, depending on Rachel, which angle I find. But thankfully, nice right angle. How many of you have ever been out in a pool or on a lake and tried to stand on like an inner tube or something like that and noticed if you try and jump off, if you try and dive off, what happens? Always shoots out from underneath your feet. That, that's that. It's, you've got a lot of mass compared to the little inner tube or the little rubber boat or the air mattress or whatever it is you're trying to balance on. And so if you try and give yourself some forward momentum, you're going to give that small object a lot of backwards velocity. Same backwards momentum as you you have much more inertia, much more mass, okay? Or, and I think I told the story in a couple of my classes, I used to teach canoeing in summer camp, and I would always watch people come back to the dock, and they would stand up in their canoe. What's the momentum of them in their canoe right now? Zero, and then they would try and step off the dock, giving themselves momentum that way, and since their initial momentum was zero, the canoe had to pick up momentum that way, and inevitably there'd be a splash, and you would say they learned a valuable life lesson. This was before everybody carried $800 tech objects in their pockets, and so you really didn't care if they went into the water. Probably nowadays, probably, maybe, probably I might maybe warn them. I don't know. Maybe not, because it's still funnier than heck. I see a few of you looking embarrassed like you've experienced said phenomenon. Well, there's good physics there, too. Are you okay solving this with Pythagoras, or do you want me to keep going? Okay, sorry? Right, so solve. Nope. And Sokotoa, in fact, solve with Py Pythagoras? It's saying it's spelled wrong? Or capitalize it, okay, fair enough. And Sokotoa. Shouldn't recognize that word. Oh, it's all caps, so it knows that's an acronym. Um, the only thing is, because this is all right angles, this is maybe a little easier. This might be a nice part B. For example, uh, I could ask how much kinetic energy was contained in the bomb? Half mv squared plus a half mv squared plus a half mv squared, and you wouldn't know that third B until you solved the momentum. That might be a nice question. Or I might say, oh, how much kinetic energy does one piece have? That might be a nice question. It's a good way to stick some combination work energy. Speaking of, Phenomenal like my phenomenal drawing of the roller coaster in lesson seven. Okay? Either a ballistic pendulum 
which is cool. Hey, you're shooting stuff, guns. Good physics, even though they creep me out in real life. Or an amusement park ride, roller coaster coming down the hill, hitting an object, and how high, sticking, how high will they go up the next hill? Okay. Uh, I think there is some like that. I think, I think, I think. In, yeah, you know what? I just saw a couple already. In your review, hey, like number 39. They're pretty easy to spot as I go through really, really quick. Oh, I thought there was one more that I saw there earlier. So 39 is a good one. I thought there was one other one there. Oh, hey, here's a good example, by the way, 31 of uh, something rebounding. The most common mistake, kids let V initial be positive and V final be positive. If you say that V initial is positive, that better be negative. Oh, here, another example. Collision and a change in height, change in speed. Here's sort of an explosion, only this time your initial momentum is not zero. But 22 is kind of cool. Uh, I thought there was one. Oh, yeah, here you go. Another collision, change in height, change in speed. So there's a couple of those on your review for you to practice. Absolutely, you can expect to see something like that. Okay. What else? Let me pause for one second, read my notes. So there are several of these in the review. See, number 19, 30, and 39, if you're looking for more examples. Other questions that I really like from the review? I like number one, 14, 16, 18. So I like number one, 14, 16, 18, 19, 21, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. Apparently I liked 31 last year. I'm really just going from what I wrote last year. Apparently I liked 32 last year. Or 30, 30, 30, 34 last year, is that, I typed it right and said it wrong. Apparently I liked 39 last year. And I think I stuck a couple of scholarships I said are now fair game. Now, what did I say in previous years? What did I like? I like number, I, I wrote down here, I really like number 28. Okay which I have in this one as well. Oh, here they are. I like 14, 16, 18, 19, 21, 22. Boy, this is repetitive. 24, 26, 28, 30, 31, 34, 39, 40. Wow! Apparently I'm able to repeat this from year to year. I don't think I did. Usually I go through the review. So, can I look at number 28? What part of this do I like? Have I tried to drop hints about during this tutorial and in the last couple of days? Huh? Rebounding. Okay. So, there's a change in direction. That's what I like about it. Uh, see if I can find, oh. Change in direction. This one actually also has impulse and force as well as a change in direction, but there's a rebound. Uh, da, 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 da. Do 
I see another rebound? I thought I think there's one more. I think it's earlier on, to be perfectly honest. 24 is also a rebound bouncing off the wall thingy. Oh yeah, there's uh, moving due east and wet. Again, if it's linear, I probably am not going to have everything just go in a nice straight line if it's linear. Maybe. But odds are, hey, watch for a change in direction. That's much more vectors, physics 12, the emphasis that we've tried to put on vectors in this unit. Are there any questions from the review that you would like me to go over? What I'll do is I'll copy it, I'll change the numbers, and I'll walk through how to solve it with you. Although, hey, my answer key is online, and probably you can figure it out from my answer key as well. Okay, let me freeze the screen, pause the video, and I'm going to check my test to make sure I haven't missed anything important. So freeze the screen. So I just gave the people that were here a few hints about the test. If you didn't make it to the tutorial, you'll have to phone a friend, text a buddy, Facebook someone, or whatever it is that you call being socially interactive with somebody in this generation, and find out what it is that you missed. But now, for all of you that are still here, any questions, anything else you want me to go over? I'm going to be around tomorrow after school for a while. I've got to sprint out and grab a bite to eat because the seniors play tomorrow at 6.30 and I'm here announcing till 10 p.m. I'm going to be around Friday after school for a little while. Uh, I'm, I think I'm around Monday after school next week. Well, it doesn't help my block A's. I am around Tuesday after school next week. doesn't help my... So test Monday test Tuesday. Don't forget the bonus video game. I already had about 10 or 12 of you already email me a screenshot. It's kind of a fun one and it does reinforce the physics and there is actually pretty good. You do see, oh, if I hit something with some sideways momentum, it'll bounce off at that angle. Okay, let me pause the video.